The voice you are about to hear belongs to one of these young ladies. Two loves have I, and they tear me apart. Two loves have I, both are in my heart. What is your name, please? My name is Jeannie Pace. What is your name, please? My name is Jeannie Pace. What is your name, please? My name is Jeannie Pace. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Jeannie Pace and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of suave hairdressing and conditioner, and Endon dandruff treatment shampoo. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Mr. Tom Poston. Next, Miss Kitty Carlisle. Then, Mr. Don Amici. And finally, Miss Polly Bergen. Panel, will you please open your envelopes and take out your affidavit cards and follow along as I read from this first one. I, Jeannie Pace, managed to work simultaneously at two most unlikely occupations. First, I am a professional singer. I am currently singing in a New York East Side Supper Club. I have also made records and appeared on television. Second, I am a roller derby skater. I have skated with both the Brooklyn Red Devils and the New York Chiefs. Many nights I have skated in a rough derby match, patched my bruises, put on an evening gown in the team dressing room, and have been out singing on a nightclub floor 30 minutes later. Signed, Jeannie Pace. <laughs> there you have it for our first round tonight, panel. Three ladies all claiming to be Jeannie Pace, professional roller skater and singer. And we'll begin this first round of questioning with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, bud. Uh, number two. What is the second line of Two Loves of I? I can't remember. Number one, can you remember? I, I can't remember. Number three, can you remember? Both are in my heart. I beg your pardon? Both are in my heart. Uh, number one, who do you record for? Jade. I did record for Jade Records. Number two, who's your agent? Bill Davis. Number three, where do you, uh, what uh, supper club do you sing at? I'm now appearing at Pillow Talk. The Pillow Talk. Number one, um, what is the object in, in roller derby skating? What do you have to do to win? Well, actually, you score points. How do you score a point? The, a jammer goes out, circles the track, and then uh, passes the opposing players. Tom? Thank you, bud. <laughs> Number two, what's a jammer? Uh, a jammer uh, is the position uh, that has to, the person who scores. I thought it was something you wore at Pillow Talk. No. <laughs> he jammers. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> tell me, number three, what oh. key has five flats in it? Do you know? B flat. Do you know, number three, who wrote Two Loves Have I? No, I don't. Number two, where is the piano located at the Pillow Talk? Um, on the side, as you walk in on the side. Number one, can you tell me uh, who is GAC? GAC, that's in uh, a theatrical agency. G Thank you. Number one, can you tell me how many flats in, in B flat? No, I can't. You don't read music? No, I don't. Uh, number two, how did you get to be a roller derby expert? Well, it was something I've always wanted to do, and I went into training for it. I started with the uh, junior league, and um, then I went on with the uh, Chicago Westerners. Number three, uh, did you go on with the Chicago Westerners too? Yes, I did. Where do you roller derby now? At 14th Street Armory. At 14th Street what? 14th Street Armory. Oh, 
And uh, when you start your or when you start to rehearse an orchestra, and someone says letter A, what does that mean? Sing out a few vocal chords. What did you say? Sing out a few vocal chords. Don, I mean, uh, you... number two, who made uh, uh, the song uh, uh, Two Loves of I famous? I don't remember. You know, number one, would you know? No, I don't. Uh, number three, what is the French title of the song? I don't know. Do you know who made it famous, number three? No, I do not. Uh, number, uh, number two, what is your range? Well, it varies. Uh, number, Doesn't number, everyone? number one, what would your range be? Well, I wouldn't know exactly. I would say between F maybe and B flat. Uh, number three, how fast do you go in the, in the, uh, the roller skating derbies? Usually we can pick up speed from about 20 to 25 miles an hour. Up to 25? That's about it. And you have to speed now by way of marking down your ballot votes. And if you will do so without consultation panel, and in so doing, you will select number one, number two, and number three. And of course, the challenger's team will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Everybody voted? All right, Tom, for whom? I voted for number one because uh, I want him to get the money, and I think I'm wrong. <laughs> Kitty, which one did you select? I voted for number one. They all gave answers that were totally incorrect on music. But I, and I know nothing about roller derbies, but I thought number one gave the best answers on the roller derby. <laughs> uh, Don, which one do you think is real? I voted for number three, uh, Bud, and I... Uh... Wish I could give you a real good reason why I did this, Hush. but I can't. Holly. Well, I was for number three all along until the last question, starting at letter A, and she gave the wrong answer to that. Number two didn't know her range, which a singer, is, even if they don't read music, has to know. Number one gave a range that is very reasonable. It's, it's my range. So, <laughs> even if she's going to be in competition with me, I still vote for her. <laughs> All right, and so we have it. The way we voted in playing this, our first game tonight, and we come now to our own peculiar moment of truth when we find out whether we're right and whether we're wrong. So bear with us as we discover which one of these three young ladies is the real combination professional roller skater and singer. So will the real Jeannie Pace please stand up? Thank you, Miss Pace, very much. Now, let's check on the rest of you. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Rosemary Strafasi, and I sell advertising space for Golf Digest magazine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, your real name and what you do, please? My name is Rosemary Caruso, and I draw forms and charts for the M.W. Kellogg Company. Thank you. Well, the panel did rather well, which means there was only one incorrect vote for you folks, meaning a total at $250 per incorrect vote, $250 total from Helene Curtis, and of course, a gift package of all of the fine beauty products made by Helene Curtis. Thank you so much for being with us. I hope you enjoyed your visit. We certainly enjoyed having you here. Good night and good luck. Thank you. All right, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is I.S. Malik. What is your name, please? My name is I.S. Malik. What is your name, please? My name is I.S. Malik. Once again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, I.S. Malik, am general manager for an American business machine firm in my home country. I am also a golfer and have three times held the amateur golf championship of my native land. I came to this country to compete in the World Amateur Teen Championship for the President Eisenhower Cup. Signed, I.S. Malik. Panel, you heard as I did, these three gentlemen claiming to be I.S. Malik, visiting golf champion. Let's start this round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. In the affidavit, uh, Mr. Malik, number one, it doesn't say what uh, is your native land. Where do you come from? I come from Lebanon. 
And number two, where do you come from? From India. India. And number three, where do you come from? From Egypt. Uh-huh. Well, I took care of that. I sure did. <laughs> um, number one, where is the Masters played? The Masters play is the national championship. And that was... In te- where does it take place? It takes place, it can take place in this country. Number two, do you know where the Masters take place? I think at a place called Augusta. Uh-huh. Number three, what kind of business machines uh, do you represent? <coughs> we um, represent Remington Rand Corporation. And number one, what do you represent? I also represent Remington Rand Corporation in Beirut. Uh, Don? Uh, number two, uh, do you play by the same rules that are abided by here in, in America? Go in on. America, I do. So, uh, are the, uh, then what is the penalty for out of bounds? Stroke and distance in international games. I in international? Uh, number, th- number three, what is the penalty for water? Uh, one stroke. One stroke? Uh, number one, uh, what is the penalty for out of bounds in match play? One stroke. In match play? Yes. What about number two in medal play? Stroke and distance. Uh, number three, how much do you have to roll a ball when you're addressing the ball before it's a, a penalty? Oh. Well, Do you understand when, when you're addressing a ball and you touch the ball, how much does it have to roll before it's a penalty? Six inches. Number one? Would you agree with that? We don't have that rule in Lebanon. Yeah. Polly Bergen? <laughs> that makes it convenient. <laughs> uh, number two, who held the champion, the amateur team championship last year? Australia won. Not last year, nobody held it. Nobody held it last year? Not last year. <laughs> There was a tie, or they didn't want to give a prize? What was, why didn't anybody hold it last year? For the simple reason that it wasn't played. They didn't play it last year. <laughs> Number three, what's a mashie? A mashie? A mashie. A mashie. This applies to its names given to the iron clubs but they are no longer used. We are actually using numbers. I see. Numbers. Tom Poston, please. Thank you. Uh, Number two, could you uh, name three American firms which manufacture adding machines? Well, Remington Land, of course, is the foremost. uh, Is is that the one which you represent as well? Yes. Could you name two others, perhaps? (laughs) Well, uh, However grudgingly? I think Burroughs manufactured it. Burroughs, and one other? Possibly IBM. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever else you are, you're certainly a sportsman. (laughs) Number one, could you tell me what does best ball mean in a foursome? That's when you take the score of the best man on the team and you count that. Well, I guess that's it once again. It's time for you to mark your ballots and vote. Again, without consultation. And in so doing, as before, you will vote for number one, number two, or number three. I have to take one last look. One last look? All right, Polly, take one last look. It has to be one of them, doesn't it? It has to be one of them, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Why? Well, it's just a whim that we have tonight. Vote reasonably quickly. It's only a half-hour show. <laughs> All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for, uh, for number two. It doesn't really matter too much whether he's the right one or not. It takes a fine sportsman and a gentleman to answer the question as faithfully and as fairly as he did mine. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle, your vote. Well, they were all marvelous. I voted for number two because he told me that the Masters was played in Augusta, but I don't believe I asked the question to number three. So I voted for number two on the basis of his answer. Don. Well, I voted, uh, you can see I voted for number one first, but while Polly was here, I changed it to number three. I guess that's permissible, isn't it? You sure. didn't call for it. Okay. Uh, I guess my reasons for voting for number three is that he, uh, uh, I would say, according to uh, my conception of a golfer, he fits it best. And Polly? I don't think it's any of them. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Uh, uh, I voted for number two, but I just have a hunch that, the, that it... 
that it is. Are you competing in the chair? No, I'm not. No. I'm not. I know what you have in mind. A couple of times we've had I them all. I voted for number two. I, I am in the biggest idea, really. I just... Uh... You're basing us on the times that we fooled you all by having all of them the same name all stand up at the same time. This is the time we would have none of them. Is that it? I think so, yes. Huh? All right, well, we'll cast your vote anyway and see how it works out, because this, again, is the time for finding things out, and we'll find out now which one of these gentlemen is the real team golfer, visiting golf champion from his native country. Will the real I.S. Malik please stand up? Thank you, sir. I was a little, you know, for a while there, I thought somebody was going to say that a mashie was a fellow who gets fancy with a girl or something, but I... <laughs> we ought to wish Mr. Molly good luck. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes, we should. Good Best luck. of good luck. Yes. When does the uh, uh, match take place? It is already there. It already is. And how did you come out? How did you make out? Oh, we didn't do so badly. Not so badly? <laughs> Don't ask me any more questions. Don't ask you any more questions. <laughs> All right. Question period is over, and the votes have been cast. <laughs> Number one, your real name and what you really do. My name is Albert Rashid, president of Rashid Sales Company of Brooklyn, importers of Arabic records and Arabic motion pictures. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> and number three, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Marcel Bouillard. I'm the oh. owner of the Hucking Egyptian Art Shop in New York City. And confidentially, I've never played golf in my life. <laughs> <laughs> in spite of that, you scored. You had one par there because you had one vote, and that was one wrong one, like the round before. We had the same score again. So that means one uh, incorrect vote, $250 total for you three gentlemen. But I do hope you enjoyed your visit. On your way out, there will, of course, be a gift package of Helene Curtis' wonderful uh, beauty products for your ladies. Good night and good luck to you. Thank you. Now, panel, let me bring you our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Harold Shelley. What is your name, please? My name is Harold Shellis. What is your name, please? My name is Harold Shellis. Again, follow along, panel, if you will. I, Harold Shellis, am a root driver salesman for a bakery company. Like everybody else, there was one thing that I never had a chance to do that I wanted to do above all others. I wanted a ride in a submarine. For 10 years, I wrote letters, sent telegrams, and pulled every string I could think of. These persistent efforts got me snubbed by the Pentagon, sidetracked by the Navy, ignored by the President, and questioned by the FBI. <laughs> Finally, through the help of a Catholic priest thousands of miles away in a jungle mission in Brazil, I got my submarine ride. Now I am happy back on my bakery route. There's only one thing more I would like. Another ride on the submarine. Signed, Harold Schellis. Now, you heard the claims of these three gentlemen to be Harold Shellis, submarine rider extraordinary. We'll start with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you, bud. Uh, number two, what are soft goods on your, on your truck? Well, we call bread, rolls, cakes, and so forth. We Would have you tell cakes. me, what are, what are non-perishable? What do you call non-perishable on your truck? Well, we don't have too many non-perishable uh, goods on our uh, bakery route. But we have a lot of specialties during the summer, like ice cream and things like that. Thank you. Number three, what is a return? What is a return? Yes, please. A return is an unsaleable item, something that uh, you didn't sell out, you brought it back. Yeah. Kitty Carlisle. Number one, um, people who are afraid of closed-in places are called, I think, a claustrophobe. You must be the opposite of that, wanting to get on a submarine. What do they call that? Must be an extrovert. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what was the nationality of the Brazilian, of the priest in, in Brazil who got you on the... On he was the... an American. He was the son of one of my route ladies. An, uh, one of your what, route ladies? How yeah. did this happen? Well, uh, she told me about him and... How did I he got... get you on the submarine? I got in touch with him and he wrote to... He had a friend down there that was a priest that had just gotten into the Navy and went on to the submarine. And I tried for 10 years, so wheels were turning and I decided I'd try to get him to And get how did he do on. it? He wrote to the Admiral, Admiral Birch, and... That was it. Admiral who? Birch. Birch? And he put you on a submarine? Well, he got me at the submarine base at uh, Groton. And how long were you there on it? A Don? full day. 
Uh, number two, what is your license number? Uh, we, I have Illinois license. I work out of Chicago, and incidentally, I know you live near Chicago. What's your license number? Uh, the license number is 41268, and it's blue and gold license. Uh, number three, what's your license number? Uh, 3K6549. Where are you from? Long Island City. Right here Long Island City. Number one, what's your license number? Lance, Georgia, GL5641. Uh, number uh, three, what is your route? My route is in Queens. What, what is it? Can you describe it for me? Where do you start from? Where do you go? What streets? Where do I start from? What streets? Uh, start from uh, 220th Street. I go down to 230th Street. Uh, number one, what's the weight of your truck? Uh, 3,000 pounds. Uh, number two, how much uh, uh, goods are you allowed to carry in your truck? Well, we have an unlimited amount uh, in our goods. Polly? Depending on our customers, of course. We know our customers. We have 200. Polly? Polly. Polly. Wait, wait. He, he, he just keeps talking. Polly? He's just marvelous. Number Polly? three. Yes, bud. Uh, number three. Uh, what is your license number? On the submarine that you rode. Now, where did you ride it? Where did you take, get on it? Uh, from Groton, Connecticut. From Groton, Connecticut. That's right. And what kind of a submarine was it? A regular? A uh, standard submarine. Okay. Not a... Uh, no, no, not no, a Nautilus. Nothing I like see. that. I right. see. Uh, number two. Uh, on the submarine... Um, uh, did you have a, no, you wouldn't. Number one, uh, did you? Well, he wouldn't, he didn't, and neither did you, and there you are. The time is up, it's time for you now to mark your ballots once more for the third and last time this evening. Without consultation, vote for number one, number two, or number three. How are we fix this round? Are we all marked? No. Will we be? Probably. Soon. <laughs> there isn't much time, so we'll oh, vote quickly this time. Oh, don't rush me. Like I don't mean to that. rush you, Polly, but it's our time fair. is running a little short. All right. Tom? I voted for number three, as you can plainly see. I should have voted for Polly because I really did like the way she answered her questions <laughs> the best. But I voted for number three. <laughs> and Kitty, your vote. I voted for number three. I, I like number one's questions, but when you asked about his license, he shut his eyes as if he were trying to visualize it. <laughs> And I thought it was number three. And what is your opinion, Don? I voted for number three. I, uh, I don't think you're allowed to carry an unlimited amount, and I uh, think that a bakery truck should weigh more than 3,000 pounds, but I'm not sure of that. Polly, what did I rush you into? What kind of, into what kind of a vote did I rush you? <laughs> the wrong one. <laughs> I voted for number one because I liked his southern accent, and... Uh, I, I think that he looks like the most aggressive that would stick with something for 10 years, because we Southerners are like that. And, uh, and also, you rushed me, and number one was the fastest number to write down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check it, see what the fastest low, and how I wanted we go. to get three right tonight, and you, you didn't give me time to well, think. Well, how do you know now? Wait until we find out, shall we, before you start accusing. Let's see who's what and which is where here. As we learn which one of these three gentlemen is the real submarine rider extraordinary. Will the real Harold Shellis please stand up? Right the panel did well tonight, but I'll tell you what, Polly, uh, I'll consider Don't that... Don't try to make up, bud. All right, I won't. <laughs> Next time, no makeup. <laughs> well, it was nice to learn your story. So, number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? I'm George Thomason with Public Relations for the Boy Scouts of America, and thank you, Polly Bergen. Vote on November 8th. The Boy Scouts urge you to. <laughs> Now, number two, may we have your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Bunny Levitt. I represent Converse Basketball Shoes, and I teach the game of basketball throughout the world. Oh. Incidentally, panel, I want to tell you something about Bunny Levitt. He must teach the game well because he holds the world's record for consecutive foul shots. 499 in a row is his record. Well, I've been checking our score here tonight. It's not 499 again. There was only one incorrect vote at $250 from Helene Curtis. But, of course, the gift package of those fine Helene Curtis beauty products 
for your lady. Thanks so much, gentlemen. Good night and good luck to you. To my good friends in Roanoke, Virginia, I'll see you next Saturday for the Harvest Bowl festivities. Panel, that's all the time we have, so good night. Good night. Good night, good night bud. bud. Bud Collier saying good night from Helene Curtis and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. This week's show has been brought to you by Helene Curtis, creators of such fine beauty products as suave hairdressing and conditioner, and in dandruff treatment shampoo, and new tender touch dry skin bath oil. This is Roger Foster saying the preceding good night. Program the preceding program was pre-recorded. The preceding program was pre-recorded.